Hello again. One of the most significant achievements in the last few decades of those adhering to left-wing ideology is to make the idea of human races thoroughly disreputable. The phrase race is a social construct, as neat a piece of Marxist rhetoric as one could hope to find, has been repeated over and over again until it has become axiomatic, and anybody questioning the idea is denounced as either a fool or a rogue. However, telling the same falsehood over and over again does not ultimately make it any more true than it was the first time it was uttered. Let me explain what I mean. Although there are indeed no pure races in the senses that um, 19th century ideologues use the term, that doesn't mean that there are no inherent or biological differences between a black person from Nigeria and a white man from Britain. This idea that all differences are purely environmental and associated with upbringing and culture lies at the heart of the idea that race is a social construct. Let's see how this lie became part of mainstream discourse in Britain and the United States. Once upon a time, it was believed that there were half a dozen subspecies of humans arranged in a hierarchy. Those belonging to one of these races, as they were called, all shared certain characteristics and were limited by their biology. Chinese people were cunning and cruel, black people primitive and dull-witted, white people noble and intellectual, and so on. We know without a shadow of a doubt that this facile biological determinism is false. The fact that we meet stupid white people, or black intellectuals, or kind but dim-witted Chinese people means that there must be more to the case than this simple view. There is more to it than that. Whatever the situation might have been in the distant past, today we are almost all of us mongrels with mixed genes and ancestry. African Americans, for instance, have an average of 24% white European DNA and a dash of Native American as well. The situation is even more complicated than that because the 75% of sub-Saharan African DNA is also a hopeless jumble of different ethnic groups or races. Africa was once populated by the Khoisan, once known as Bushmen, together with Pygmies in Central Africa. Then the Bantus, those whom we would regard today as typical black Africans, spread out from their homeland in West Africa and colonised the continent, killing off or enslaving the Khoisan and Pygmies. However, they also interbred with them, absorbing many of their genes. When we look at a famous black person like Nelson Mandela, we can see at once his skin <coughs> is a lot lighter than the average Nigerian, say, and his facial features are also different. This is because he was largely of Khoisan ancestry. This same process of jumbling up ethnic groups happened in Europe as well, and also in Asia. <coughs> Whenever pure racial groups, whatever pure racial groups once existed, wherever they were, it's no longer the case. However, this doesn't mean that all inherent and genetic differences between black people and white, and also between them and the populations in East Asia, have vanished. They have not. And black people differ in many ways from white people. But these differences are by percentage and proportion. They're not absolutes. In other words, we can talk about white people being a, a greater likelihood to have such and such a character, or black people being more probable to be so-and-so, or those from East Asia having a higher proportion of such and such. That's because the races are jumbled up. There aren't any pure races at all, there are merely ethnic groups.
I want to mention a little bit about some of the inherent ways in which black people differ from white people. I've mentioned one of these many times, which is that black children tend to stand and walk at an earlier age than white babies. This is cross-cultural and has nothing to do with culture, nationality or environment. It's the same in a British city as on a Caribbean farm. It's observed in America as it is in Kenya. It is an inbuilt difference between black people and white people. As usual, in the description to this video, I give links to academic papers on the matters about which I am talking. What other differences are there between black people and white? The age at the onset of puberty is one. It happens to be earlier in black children than it is in white ones. This may be connected with the fact that black adolescents tend to have higher levels of testosterone than white teenagers and young people. Puberty strikes about a year earlier for black people. The question of extra testosterone is an interesting one too, for several reasons. Um, I'm sure that viewers know that black Americans have the highest levels of cancer of the prostate in the whole world, and this is due to having higher levels of circulating testosterone. I again give details um, of papers about this subject in the description to this video. Testosterone is associated with athletic success and is important in things like running, football and boxing. Is there a connection with what is seen in sports in this country? Is that too anything to do with the ability to walk and run at an earlier age than the general population? Is that why black people are prominent in sport? Then too there is the question of academic underachievement which is sometimes attributed to black people having lower IQs on average than white people. Perhaps there is another explanation which might shed light too on the disproportionate number of black people who are the victims or perpetrators of violent crime in Britain and the United States, including homicide. As well as being able to explain the prowess of black people on the running track and sports field. High levels of testosterone are found not only in those who excel in some sports, but also among violent criminals in prison. Those who have faced disciplinary action in prison for clashing aggressively with warders are found to have higher levels of testosterone than usually expected. How might this affect education and attainment? It does appear that black school pupils are at an increased risk of failing at school as they become teenagers. At least part of the answer might lie in biological factors. Being able to stand, walk, run and jump at an earlier age than other ethnic groups might, together with having many role models who are footballers, boxers and athletes, give black children a higher, greater propensity for moving about vigorously and this in turn could lead to their being less keen on sitting quietly on chairs for an hour or so at a time. It's easy to see that the result could be fidgeting and getting up and walking around when the rest of the class is supposed to be sitting down and working on some uninspiring academic task. Such conduct could lead to teachers regarding the children involved as being disruptive or disobedient. And it's a known fact that black children are more likely to be excluded than white children from school. It could also lead to lower examination pass rates. The idea that all racial and ethnic differences are merely social constructs, an optical illusion if you like, is absurd. There are very real differences between black people and white, and all the evidence suggests that at least some of these differences are genetic. That is to say nothing to do with culture, upbringing or anything else. The implication for the absor <coughs> absorption of large numbers of people from sub-Saharan Africa into European countries may be profound. <laughs>